If I say urban logistics, what does that make you think of? Urban logistics? Is that like how modern, the modern day retailer ships out products to humans? I don't, I'm not too sure about what that means. And if I say transporting merchandise in cities and towns? Actually, I do most of my shopping uh, online. It's so convenient because it'll come that day or the next day. All across Europe, online shopping obviously got a huge boost from the pandemic. Moi, c'est positif pour celui qui reçoit. Après, pour celui bon qui a rien demandé, c'est sûr, voilà, ben les bouchons en ville et ça fait aussi de la pollution et beaucoup de circulation. Is it sustainable, especially with a lot of like petrol and gas and energy used from it? A lot of questions and issues. That's indisputable. But online shopping is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's carried by an urban logistics network. Because we mustn't forget that this flow also supplies shops, construction sites, restaurants, catering operations, and more. But the online shopping boom suddenly put this major issue for Europe in the spotlight. Zależność jest prosta. Im więcej sprzedawanych towarów w internecie, tym więcej przesyłek, które powstają, tym więcej samochodów, które muszą te przesyłki dostarczyć. Im większy ruch w mieście, tym większe zanieczyszczenie powietrza, tym większa świadomość mieszkańców. People want more sustainable delivery systems but they don't want to give up delivery that's constantly getting faster and more reliable. DPD Group opened its doors to us to explore how to meet all these demands. What if the solution were different for each location, depending on local context, infrastructure and culture? We went to Estonia, Portugal, Poland, France and Great Britain to meet top experts from the sector and to explore solutions for tomorrow's logistics. According to the World Economic Forum, the online shopping explosion will increase pollutant emissions in big cities by 30% by 2030, compared to 2020. The first solution that comes to mind is to drive more sustainable vehicles. In London, that's already happening. In the heart of the British capital, Westminster Palace and its iconic Big Ben Tower have been seeing some odd little vehicles whizzing by. Little urban e-bikes, cargo bikes and electric vans. Hello guys. That is for you. Thank you so much, Victor. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, guys. Ciao. Since 2018, Matteo and his fellow drivers in the Westminster neighborhood have been making deliveries only with electric vehicles. We all live in a big city. We do lots of miles every day and burning diesel or gasoline it's definitely not a sustainable future. So I have been getting excellent reaction from strangers, as much as clients, as much as my neighbors, everybody is quite proud and happy that we made a responsible choice. Hello, sir. When we have urban logistics, it's a daily footprint that is added to that city. Uh, not only we talk about uh, air pollution directly from the vehicles, but also uh, noise and uh, congestion. And therefore, all the contributions that we can have to lower this impact are quite significant. New vehicles have cropped up to weave through London traffic. This urban e-bike is 100% electric too, but it's more compact than a van. You can't throw them in and then pick them up. You have to have a good organization and keep them organized, but not that hard for sure. On this side would have taken something around 90 parcels, you know, so it's, it's a good vehicle. 
I find it easy, kind of relaxing. You don't queue too much. You can always find parking. Most of all, everybody is beeping you, waving you. It's a funny vehicle. These sustainable delivery services are in line with the demands of both city dwellers and the cities themselves. Because more and more cities are mandating the use of decarbonized means of transport. Low emission zones are crucial for Europe. There are several countries that are expanding these uh, low emission zones. Basically, we are excluding the most polluting vehicles uh, to, to circulate in these areas. Most of them are old vehicles. But we are already transitioning these to zero emission zones. We're starting to implement areas where we only have pedestrians, bicycles, uh, and electric vehicles without emissions. Several European cities, starting with London, have taken the plunge. From 2025 on, only electric vehicles will be allowed on the roads in the centre of the British capital. But to achieve that, the city will have to be completely reorganised by putting logistic sites in the heart of urban centres. The drawback with electric vehicles, bicycles and walking is that you just can't go as far as with good old internal combustion engine vehicles. So delivering from a logistics centre near the customer is the key to the solution. Plus le dernier entrepôt se situe près du destinataire final, plus le mode pourra être un mode électrique, mais surtout un mode doux et un véhicule de, de, de petite taille de type vélo, vélo cargo. To get closer to the final recipient, urban logistics have to infiltrate to the heart of large cities. Il faut savoir se, se glisser là où on, où on, on nous attend pas forcément. J'aime bien dire que la logistique urbaine c'est un peu l'eau qui s'infiltre en réalité. Hein. Elle se met finalement là où elle peut où elle peut se mettre. Les espaces interstitiels, les friches, c'est aussi la revalorisation d'un certain nombre de pieds d'immeubles. Behind the 100% electric delivery experiment in the centre of London, there is a micro-depot tucked away amongst the Victorian buildings of Westminster. Ten. Eight. Seven. A hyperactive hive that takes up just 460 square metres. This depot is the smallest in the network. This is a flagship depot. It's a prototype to show what can be done. It's important for us to be in the centre of London due to the range of the vehicles. They're not as large as obviously using a petrol or diesel vehicle. And it means that if a driver needs to recharge, they can come back to the depot and also get more parcels as well. So it's just convenient. In order to get a foot in the door in London's dense and expensive city centre, it's essential to operate efficiently in a very small space. In the morning, the site is supplied by a truck, bringing parcels from the main London city depot. This site is only delivered with electric vehicles. This is the freight vehicle that was last to arrive into the depot. This has about six to 700 parcels on it. Westminster's mini depot manages to handle up to 2,000 parcels a day, while emitting 45 tonnes less CO2 a year compared to when it was operating with combustion engine vehicles. Now let's go further and imagine that fewer trucks are coming into our cities. For that to happen, we'd have to have several players sharing the same truck. Well, that solution is already operational. Currently, each urban logistics player goes their own way. Craftspeople, shopkeepers and other businesses are all supplied by their own distributors which means multiple disorganized flows towards city centers. In France, in the city of Toulouse, we put an end to that absurd every man for himself logic. At the heart of the solution is Urbi, a logistics hub belonging to the La Poste Group that's located on the outskirts of town. Là, vous êtes dans le centre de distribution mutualisée Urbi. Donc c'est euh, ici c'est le centre névralgique. Là, vous avez euh, les travées, vous avez les, les codes postaux 
de Toulouse qui sont représentés. C'est un peu comme un entonnoir, vous avez l'ensemble des produits rentrant sur, sur Toulouse et en fait, au final, sur un, un code postal, vous allez voir qu'un seul camion qui va faire la livraison de l'ensemble des, euh, des produits. To understand this shared system better, let's look at Midica, the town's largest home deco store. First step, the merchandise arrives from all over France in different trucks. It's unloaded, but that's not all, because Erby offers an additional service. On va flasher le code barre pour faire l'entrée en stock directement du, du magasin Midica. On va euh, reconfectionner l'ensemble de, de ces produits qui auront été flashés par étage du magasin. Donc ça facilite pour pouvoir mettre tout de suite les, les marchandises en, en rayon. Then merchandise from lots of different suppliers is all loaded into a single truck. Instead of the 15 separate trucks that used to deliver directly to the store, now just a single one will be heading into Toulouse's town center. Traffic has been divided by 15. Deliveries begin in the early morning. Florent is already on the job. À cette heure-ci, c'est assez calme. C'est assez fluide. C'est assez plaisant de livrer dans, dans ces conditions. When he arrives, there's no need to double park, so no angry horns blowing. Toulouse City Hall places a delivery space right in front of the Medica store. The temporary spot goes pedestrian again once unloading is over. Toilette pour le premier, ascenseur de droite. And the truck doesn't drive away empty either. The previous day's cardboard, plastic and pallets are loaded to be recycled. Once the packaging has been dropped off at the recycling center, the truck goes back to its base to start the virtuous cycle all over. Solutions exist for reducing the number of trucks inside cities. But if you zoom out a bit, you'll realize that your parcel's journey started well before then, often hundreds of kilometers away. So we have to work on optimizing parcel distribution across the entire logistics network. Trucks still do the heavy lifting for the vast majority of merchandise transport. They are still indispensable. To optimize the number of trucks on the road, you should load them fully. It sounds obvious, but it really reduces the logistics impact. Let's take a look at how it actually works. Here's a real-life glimpse of a mega parcel sortation hub in Poland. It's located in Strykov, a city in the very center of the country. This place is over 13,000 square meters, which we got more than 500 line holes, more than 550 people working on the shift. A majority of our parcels, over 50% of them, going directly to this place where we're actually sorting them into 64 destinations in Poland. Bringing all the trucks to the same place makes it possible to load them fully. First, the parcels are unloaded and routed to other trucks, depending on their final destination. Once the parcel has arrived at the right chute, the truck still has to be fully loaded, and that requires the right method. We're trying to focus to put the parcels in a Tetris way, put the heavy parcels on the bottom, light parcels on the, on the top, so we're actually not going to damage any uh, light parcels. On the end of the uh, line hole, we will put any small parcels that will be in the black boxes. We want to make sure that we actually got all parcels fitted into one line hole instead of sending two half empty. The control center is informed when the truck has been fully loaded and is ready to go. 
and they close the chute. The parcels are then directed to the next truck. So real-time management is key to optimizing operations. Chodzi tak naprawdę o optymalizację liczby wykonywanych połączeń, a tutaj takie planowanie z dnia na dzień i później zarządzanie operacyjne w czasie rzeczywistym jest jednym z kroków, które idą w kierunku właśnie optymalizacji liczby pojazdów, które w ruchu miejskim występują. From the hub to the city, logisticians aim at reducing their impact. They now want to go further by alerting inhabitants about urban pollution. In order to do so, they are measuring air quality. Located where the Tagus flows into the Atlantic, Lisbon is famous for pastel houses and the futuristic Nations Park. But there is a dark side to the Portuguese capital's beauty. Like most large European cities, its air pollution levels exceed the World Health Organization's guidelines. In Portugal, there is around 6,000 premature deaths per year related with the increased levels of air pollution. Urban logistics shares some of the responsibility for that. Internal combustion vans emit the carbon dioxide causing climate change, as well as the fine particles that have a direct impact on citizens' health. People, they are not aware that actually their lives are in danger because of the high levels of certain pollutants. So, uh, awareness is critical. That's why those involved in urban logistics decided to take action based on a very simple idea. What if the vans that are part of the problem could become a solution? Since 2019, 80 DPD vans in Lisbon have been equipped with small sensors that measure the level of fine particles in the air every 12 seconds. Drivers aren't just delivering parcels, they're measuring air quality along their route in real time. É, é, acho que é uma, uma peça fundamental para, cada vez mais para a nossa sociedade, perceber uh, que tipo de qualidade é que nós estamos a, a respirar dentro de uma cidade em que contém muito, muito movimento. The Air Quality Monitoring Program allows us the identification of polluted zones that no one had been aware of. That was a spot in Lisbon and we were really surprised why the pollution was really high because traffic was not very intense there, etc. So we looked around and we arrived to the conclusion that the main question there was a terminal for, for big ships and these big cruise ships, they produce a lot of um, pollution, I would say. The data collected by Polytrack makes it possible to map air quality for the entire city day by day and hour by hour. It's a useful tool for helping Lisbon take action. The municipality, uh, thanks to our data, they have created the low emission zones, but also they have cut some avenues. We had avenues with uh, two ways, now they only have one way. They have created much more green spaces inside these more uh, polluted uh, avenues. The air quality monitoring program is a tool that's not just for cities. Boa tarde. Fazer entregazinha. It's also a way of raising awareness amongst the people of Lisbon with the help of 20 pickup stations. Those stations are equipped with sensors too. Boa tarde. Now in Lisbon, with every delivery, the customer gets a link where they can check the air quality in their neighborhood. The value of today is 13, the median mensal is 9 and the daily is 4, so today will not be a good day to circulate in the road. Following in Lisbon's footsteps, the air quality monitoring program has been extended to 27 other European cities. Transporters want to reduce their environmental footprint but they also want to provide better service. What if the answer came in a box? Are the automatic lockers showing up in more and more cities the answer for tomorrow?
perched on the banks of the Baltic Sea, Tallinn, the capital of Estonia, has enchanting medieval streets, bold architecture and hundreds of smart lockers. You see them everywhere you look. I just picked a pack from the H&M and it's very, it's very convenient. It's close to my house, so I just take it and go to home. I don't feel comfortable like if this, a strange person comes to my home. I don't need to wait for the, this driver calling and so on and so on. Usually they call, they are, I, I'm at work. Lockers are Estonians' favorite delivery option by far. They account for over 90% of all deliveries to individuals. It must be said they're open 24-7 and extremely practical to use. All you have to do is put in the code or QR code that you got on your phone and the locker opens as if by magic. In addition, they suit Estonians' taste for privacy. Estonians can choose the time they're going to pick up their, uh, their parcels and do it, uh, let's say, by not talking to anyone. And since they're located at all of the city's most strategic locations, shopping centres, universities, business centres, you don't have to go out of your way to pick your parcel up or to drop it off. I bought parcel label from online self-service, so now I have a QR code in my email and I'm scanning it to get the parcel label and send the parcel out. Lockers mean lower mileage for consumers. They also mean lower mileage for delivery people who can drop off dozens of parcels in one place. That means lower greenhouse gas emissions and less local pollution. Automated lockers, I think this is a good thing. Instead of going around the city and trying to find specific people who live in different locations, I think it, it, it's making easier the operation of a uh, good transfer and also it makes it uh, more cost effective, more environmentally friendly. Practical and sustainable, lockers are an innovation that is gaining ground all around Europe. This new trend is especially strong in the Baltic nations and Eastern Europe. However, many customers are still quite attached to the idea of delivery people coming to their door. Home delivery is still most Europeans' favourite option. According to the 2021 DPD Group eShopper Barometer, 82% of eShoppers have their purchases delivered at home. But they want more reliable, punctual delivery. In Great Britain, they have found a solution. Just can you actually... The city of Oxford is known for Harry Potter, its prestigious medieval university, and quiet residential neighbourhoods, where the one-hour delivery window has been adopted. Customers know what time their parcel will be delivered within a one-hour time window. That life-changing innovation requires careful preparation at the small depot on the outskirts of the town. All of the parcels come mixed when they arrive and we, we have it route optimised on the Saturn for us. So it'll come up with, you know, stop one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And they all have one hour time windows. And we're off for a loop around Oxford. Chris has been riding his cargo bike for eight years now. Oh, he knows shortcuts like the back of his hand so he can adjust the arrival time calculated by the Saturn device. Everyone looks forward to seeing him in the neighbourhood, where he usually delivers. Afternoon, Buzz. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, so... Parcel for you, I believe. I definitely prefer human contact with, with my deliveries. I prefer to my place, definitely. It's easy and it's safe. Time. <laughs> Thanks so much for that. Okay, <laughs> there you go. So this one's due between 2.20 and 3.20. Uh, so we're well within the window and in the green and nice and early. And yeah, we're going to go see if the customer's in. 
Hello, Innerbirds. I believe I've got a parcel for you. A few days ahead of time, customers get a message with the date and place of delivery on their phone. It leaves time for them to adjust this information at their convenience. That morning, the window is narrowed to within an hour. And 10 minutes before Chris arrives, customers get a message letting them know he's nearly there. Brilliant, no, thanks so much for that. <laughs> for us as riders, when we're out and about on the roads, uh, it massively improves you know, the ability to deliver the first time. You know, I think when if people know that they've got a delivery coming that day, but it's by the hour, it's a much more narrow window that people can work into their days. And you know, they're happy because they've ordered this stuff, they just want it to arrive you know, reliably and on time. Customers no longer have to worry about getting woken up from a nap or disturbed during a meeting. I think it's Paul, isn't it? So I've got a parcel for you. Clients can also track no their parcel on the DPD okay. app. Right, they can even find out more about who will be delivering it. Brilliant, right, thank you very much for that. In the UK, delivery people are happy to share personal information, like their hobbies, to create a bond. I knew this time it was Chris. He always delivers to me. And then on his profile, if I click on that, I can see his name, where he's from, his hobbies and interests, so I know he likes cycling. Um, and also you can see the customer rating. Uh, you can also leave comments, so here you'll see Chris has got five out of five. We do get offered sort of, you know, cups of tea and drinks whilst we're on the road, particularly when you're on the cargo bikes and it's a hot day. And it gives us a chance to get to know people around the area. Oh, I really like that. What's it like to drive? It's a lot of fun. So, with the electric assist particularly. So. Uh -huh. But hopefully you'll see more of them out and about and around. Yeah, oh, I'd be really happy to see more of these. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Have a good rest of the day. Creates unexpected contacts, especially when carried out on a cargo bike. But it does pose one key problem. What happens if what you ordered doesn't suit you? How can returning items be made easier? Returning items you've ordered often turns into something of a headache. In Warsaw, Poland's capital, they've come up with a solution to make clients' lives easier. In addition to pick-up points with partner stores, they've opened spaces that are entirely devoted to picking up and dropping off parcels. In Villano, a residential district, one of those pick-up points looks like a chic boutique. In addition to the coffee machine, this deluxe pickup point offers a try-on room and a counter for preparing parcels. Anna is a fashion designer who shops online regularly. Wrong color or size? She knows how annoying it can be to have to send clothes back. When I uh, order something online and it doesn't fit me or I don't like the material, for example, it is sometimes a problem. And it is a problem, yes, to contact with a, a delivery man so uh, when he's going to come and when I can send it back. When she comes to pick clothes up here, she only has to go a few steps to try them on. And if an outfit doesn't fit, she can pack it up and send it back immediately. There's a counter with the boxes, tape, and scissors she needs. Widzimy, że jedną z istotnych barier przed zakupem przez internet jest kwestia zwrotu. Stąd właśnie cała infrastruktura, którą tutaj mamy, która ułatwia klientom zwrócenie paczki tak naprawdę w 5 minut. Logistics players are constantly offering new services to make delivery more practical. To invent tomorrow's logistics, they have to be bold enough to explore and innovate. On the roads in Tallinn, Estonia, there's a vehicle that looks almost like a cute license-free car, except that there's no driver.
In this small country known for its big innovations, delivery in self-driving cars is already being experimented. When the vehicle arrives, customers receive a code on their phones that enables them to access the parcel. I'm not used to uh, receiving a package like that. It's really surprising. <laughs> it looks like a car. Uh, it's uh, funny and kind of a bit cute. <laughs> like a small um, human robot. The DPD network started testing self-driving delivery vehicles in May 2022. The Estonian startup Clever on Mobility is behind this innovation. Please meet Clever on One, our unmanned delivery vehicle for last mile parcel deliveries. This vehicle is uh, uh, designed to drive without the driver. We have cameras, six in total for the whole vehicle. That provides it a 360 degrees view around the unit. We have also radars to identify objects. So, for example, if a person steps in front of the car, we can apply automatic braking systems and get the vehicle to stop. During the test phase, an operator is actually driving it 150 kilometers away from Cleveron's headquarters in Viljandi. Currently, we have a safety driver or a teleoperator uh, for each of our vehicles. But in the next few years, we look at getting to one to 10 teleoperation. And only then we are setting ourselves to go the goal to be fully autonomous. In the current surge of e-commerce and parcel delivery, self-driving vehicles come as an excellent complementary solution to the fleet of driver-operated vehicles. Because 100% electric driverless vehicles are a sustainable innovation supported by the city of Tallinn, European Green Capital 2023. We have experiments on autonomous vehicles for quite a long time. Actually, Estonia is one of the first countries who made its legislation on autonomous vehicles. We are going forward. It's evolution at the end of the day. And we will never know whether it's the right thing or wrong thing before we actually try. Urban logistics are essential to cities around the world. It has now become clear that transporters can have a major impact in terms of making those cities better places to live by innovating, greening their fleets and optimizing their journeys. A company that does not have these goals within their sustainability objectives will in the near future have problems uh, with a society that wants actions from the politicians but also from companies. Public authorities also have a role to play in assisting businesses in their transition. Les collectivités territoriales, à mon avis, sont des acteurs très importants. Et ce sont des acteurs qui sont trop timides, qui ne se rendent pas compte de leur importance. Toutes les questions de permis de construire, de plan local d'urbanisme, sont gérées par les collectivités territoriales. Ces organisations de l'espace, pour le présent et pour le futur, peuvent absolument intégrer la logistique. Hand in hand, businesses and government policies can invent the sustainable, reliable logistics of the future.